How's it going guys and welcome back to a new series of Warframe. It has been a long while since I've touched this game and a lot has changed since I have. It's been probably 9 or 10 months now since I've actually played Warframe. Um, my channel obviously kind of just fell short back then. Uh, I had a lot going on, started a new job. Uh, yeah, I just had a lot going on in my life really and to be honest with you, Warframe had kind of, uh, yeah, I was kind of burnt out on it. Not much going on for me. Uh, but we're back today, and I think now is a good time uh, to do something that I've wanted to, been wanting to do for a while, which is to start the game from scratch, uh, but do it in a way that is going to be efficient. So doing all the things that I wish I'd done when I started playing Warframe. Obviously a lot has changed since then, so it's not going to completely apply to me, but there's a lot of stuff that I know that I can do early on. Uh, that I perhaps wouldn't have done if I was a new player coming into this game, and that's kind of what I want to be doing uh, with this series. So the way this is going to work, the rules are, first of all, no pay-to-play, so we're not going to be buying Platinum or, or anything like that, uh, even Tenocon stuff. We might do when we get to a certain level or we've, you know, done everything that we can do that's free. Uh, the second rule is we're going to be doing this solo, um to where it's possible i don't want to completely rule out using uh public but you know areas where it's possible to do it solo we're going to be doing a solo boss fights we're going to try as much as possible to doing them solo um we'll see maybe uh perhaps sorties eventually once we're obviously proven that we can do them in solo it might be worth doing them in public just to speed the game along after all we are trying to do this efficiently um, that also goes for clans. I'm going to be making my own clan in this and I'm going to be building it from scratch. Uh, I'm not going to be inviting anyone until it is completely kitted, so I'm going to be doing it all solo, which obviously could take a while, which leads me on to my final point, which is I'm going to be recording this over a quite a long period of time. I'm not sure when these episodes are going to be aired each time necessarily, so do bear that in mind. If you are watching and you're commenting or whatever, uh, then... It may be a while before I happen to catch those and perhaps you won't see them reflected in the next one or two videos. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be that kind of a deal. And with that, obviously, I'm going to be doing quite a lot of content per video is the idea. Um, I haven't actually decided how much I'm going to be including in each episode. I kind of want them to be perhaps 20 to 30 minutes long per episode. We'll see how that pans out. And obviously, you guys will know watching this. Um, but yeah, we're going to just start and, uh, and go through and see how we, how we fare. So first things first, I've uh, started the game here. I'm actually playing Vault. He's my, uh, frame of choice, I guess, uh, for starting this. The other choices are Mag, which you should never choose, and Excalibur, uh, who you can choose, uh, to be honest, he's a fairly versatile frame. He has good DPS, he has good mobility, and he has a good fourth ability, which uh, is good for clearing enemies, which is what you want in this. Uh, the reason I'm choosing Vault, though, is because I can build him for a lot. He has a lot of utility and a lot of damage potential, both on his weapons as well as AoE on his abilities. So his fourth ability is excellent for clearing enemies, particularly on lower levels. However, it can be used for higher level enemies as well. His third ability allows you uh, to defend and also it allows you to add damage to your weapons including crit damage which is really important uh, our second ability is going to give us speed which is always nice for moving through missions and our first ability is going to be good only early on really we can use it later on for our augment which allows us to apply electricity damage to our weapons but other than that we're not going to be using it um other than what i just said <laughs> but yeah we'll get going i'm going to just run through this uh, introduction right here uh, if you are starting off in this game and you don't really know uh, where to be going or what to do here, you just want to sort of follow the waypoints. It'll talk you through it and uh, it'll guide you towards the end. So to kind of give a... I don't know. I'm not going to do too many updates, I guess, as we go. I'll kind of just cut in for the interesting parts and whenever I want to share something. Um... And, and that'll be about it, really. But uh, to start with, I'm actually going to take the scanner. Uh, reason being, it does slash damage, and I'm not too fussed about the bow, uh, which is actually the weapon I chose previously. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, but, yeah, you can actually roam around the starting point quite a bit uh, and pick up some, uh, some valuable loot if you want to. I am just going to kind of speed run this first bit, but do bear in mind that when starting this game, I would recommend really trying to uh, open and destroy every crate possible uh, as that will give you a good chance of getting some resources early on 
Uh, but yeah, we'll carry on going through, guys. Okay, so now we get to choose our secondary weapon. I am going to be taking uh, this guy right here, the Lato. Reason being, uh, I want to be able to spam fire. I'm not a huge fan of the Spira. Um, they fly very slowly. Or the Kunai, sorry, not the Spira. Uh, they fly slowly. Although they are stealthy, it's, you know, it's not important, really. Uh, one more thing I just wanted to mention as well as we're playing through this. Um, I do have my FPS counter up in the bottom left, as you can see. Um, right now, uh, at the time of playing, the temperature where I am is extremely warm. Uh, and we do not have air conditioning here in good old Blighty. So, yeah, things are going to get pretty toasty, which is why I'm keeping an eye on it. Um... I have set my graphics cards to a lower voltage, so just so long as it doesn't fry out, I'll be happy. Uh, but yeah, the ambient temperature is much warmer than when I usually play this game, um, and I just want you guys to be aware of that as I'm recording as well. Um, if the quality isn't so good, or there might be some jutters, that is why I am just trying to protect my PC. I've had it fail on me once before, and I do not want to have it happen again. Um, so please bear that in mind as well. Um, but it looks like we're all right so far. We're staying pretty close to the 144 FPS mark, uh, even in areas where it's you know a bit uh, a bit sketchy. Uh, but yeah, we'll carry on through, guys. Again, just keep doing what the tutorial tells you, uh, and we'll get to the end. All right, guys. So we are now uh, choosing between our two primary weapons. We have the choice of the Paris, which is a bow, or the Mark One Bratton right here, which is a machine rifle or machine gun. A rifle that is a machine gun. Um, usually I would go for the Paris here. It has the highest DPS output um, and, you know, it can pierce enemies. It's generally a pretty good weapon. Um, however, I'm actually going to go with the Bratton in this game. Um, I know I actually, I now haven't got any stealth weapons, uh, which can be an issue, but uh, I'm hopefully going to overcome that, uh, but we'll see. But yeah, you can change between. It's not like you have a you know, a specific choice here. But I'm going to go with the Bratton. Uh, we can always craft the Paris uh, a bit later on if we need to. Um, but yeah, for clearing uh, swathes of enemies, uh, this is uh, probably the way to go. Uh, so let's go uh, to the quests and we'll just carry on with this. What you want to be doing, guys, as I stated previously, is you want to be going and looting everything you can in these missions. So they're going to take you a bit longer to begin with, but trust me, it is worth it, particularly now where you've got, um, you know, ore on ore resource piles uh, that you can loot which will give you uh, the rare resources especially you want to be picking those up so do go ahead and loot everything that you can on these maps it is worth it okay guys so i'm just uh, killing the kubra nests here i managed to get myself a kubra egg really good to get early on we're not going to need to have a look for that now when we come to do the howl of the kubra quest which is a quest we'll need to do a bit later on i'm just going to carry on here and continue looting away uh, and I'll catch you guys in a bit. Alright guys, so this particular mission is a spy mission. We need to access the vault in here. If, you all, if you're doing these missions, always look for the secret route. There is always a secret route. For this one up here, there is a vent you can break and just drop down through the ceiling if you can actually move. Like so. Saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle, so always be on the lookout for those. Okay guys, so we're out. We've now managed to gain ourselves uh, some uh, basic mods here that are all flawed. Uh, we've got the comm segment. We've also got a Kubra egg. Really nice to get early on. Very happy with that. Uh, and yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, start equipping some of these. We've got nothing to rank it up with yet as we don't have any endo, but uh, we'll get there. So we might as well throw those on for the tiny bit of extra damage that we do get. And then we'll go ahead and install the comm segment. So this is the kind of thing you want to be looking for, guys. We've got a Neurod pile there. Uh, we only got one Neurod from that, unfortunately. Sometimes you can get two, I believe. Uh, but as many of those as we can get, the more we can get, the better. Alright, guys. So we're out there. We managed to pick ourselves up two Neurods. Very nice. We've got the mod segment now. And we've got a few more mod, uh, flawed mods right here. Uh, that's all very nice. Alright, so we now have uh, the mod segment installed. We'll go ahead and just throw on uh, the simple mods that we've got here. So we want to put on um, probably Vitality in this instance, to be honest, as our shield is fairly high already. Um, obviously, you can put on Redirection if you wanted to, you know, boost your shield even more. But shield comes back and health doesn't. That's kind of the way I like to look at it. So do bear that in mind. Um, everything else is just kind of going to be, yeah, throwing on whatever we can here. So... 
doesn't matter too much. We can't even install anything on the scanner right now, uh, and that doesn't matter either. We don't have a companion, so we can just carry on with the game as per. Uh, let's take a look and just see what this is in our inbox. Uh, okay, we're not going to do any of this stuff either, by the way. Any Twitch gear, Prime deals, anything like that, we're not going to be collecting on. Just because I know a lot of people do not have access to that, so we'll leave it be. Okay, guys, we've now finished that mission. Quite a few more resources here, particularly ferrite. Ferrite's a good one to get a lot of early on. We're going to be using it a lot in the future. Uh, we've got ourselves some more mods here. Slowly ranking up our gear. All looking very promising. I think this is actually now at a level where we can put another mod on it, potentially. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, we need to install this first, so I'll just do that now. And then we can get ourselves uh, the Ascaris Negator. I believe that this actually can now be made instantly for zero platinum. I could be wrong. Uh, let's find out. Okay, so we need the uh, the materials first. I assume that's uh, what it's going to be next. Let's go ahead and, yeah, we'll put on uh, probably Bane of Corpus now, actually. Since I think we're about to... You know what, actually, no. That's, that's really dumb. Bane of Grenier for the foreseeable future is probably going to be better. So let's go ahead and uh, when this finishes, we'll throw ourselves into the next mission. Okay, that's now finished. We got all the resources we need from the cache. We also need to get, or we didn't need to get, sorry, we did get two new roads from that. So we're now to a total of four, which is very nice. Um, but yeah, we can now go ahead and make this a Scarus, whatever it is. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, can I rush it? Yes, I can. Good. Now we need to go ahead and equip that in gear, I believe. Uh, we'll put it just there. Oh, no, maybe not. You know what? We could probably buy some codex scanners there while we're at it. Uh, let's go ahead and buy 10k worth of these. So 20... Uh, we'll actually put that down here, I think. Yeah, that's fine. We'll sort that out at some point. Uh, we're just waiting now for this guy. Yep, there we go. Alright guys, we've now picked up the next segment for our ship. So we'll be heading to extraction now once I've just gone around and grabbed all the stuff I need. Well, not need, but want. Uh, although, what's this over here? Disable the galleon. We'll do that. We'll be able to explore a bit more, grab some more materials. Okay, and we're out. Got ourselves some new mods. We got the nav coordinates for the galleon. 180 endo. Three more new roads. Very nice. The more of this kind of stuff we can get early on also, the better. Uh, the main ones we need to be getting are going to be... Well, new roads, actually, we're going to need a fair amount. Um, oh, my. My hay fever playing up. Uh, but we're also going to need Oracle cells particularly, as well as neural sensors. They come into play quite a lot. Morphics you just pick up just normally. Um, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. But uh, now we are confronting Vor. This is the last mission, I believe. Uh, once again, though, I am just going to sort of run around and uh, break everything. So I'll catch you guys when we come to confront him. Uh, we'll just finish him off here. Like so. And then we'll uh, we'll get out now. Again, looting as we go. One thing that you can do while you're running around, if you have bought some codex scanners early on, You'll notice that there are some plants littered about, and I would highly recommend scanning those. 
uh, as you go. You're going to need them for a later mission, uh, the Silver Grove, so do make sure to be scanning those. Uh, it is 100% worth it and will save you time later on. Alright guys, so we've finished all that up. Uh, two more Neuros there, very nice. We're getting a healthy uh, stockpile of them now, particularly for early game, which is really nice. Okay, and we are now ready to do our rank 1 mastery test, so we're actually going to go ahead and do that straight away. You can do one of these per day, uh, so, you know, always make sure you're doing them if you have them active. If you fail, you can just do it the next day, it's not a big deal. XP will stack up, um, so that obviously if you rank up, uh, it will carry over. Any extra that you got previously will carry over to the next level, um, so do bear that in mind, and uh, yeah. If you feel like you can't make progress anymore in a single day, uh, you're probably wrong. <laughs> Uh, we'll come to that a bit later on, but yeah, just just bear that in mind. A lot of people seem to think that in this game, uh, you know, you you can make only a certain amount of progress per day, and then the rest is limited by you know foundry crafting time or whatever. Um, it's not true. You can you can do a lot in this game, and people don't really realize it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys will see that from how I'm going to be playing this series. There we go. So that's now done. We are now MR1. And there we go. We got ourselves our mastery slate. We'll have to figure out where to put that eventually. You can decorate your ship with those, so we'll find a good spot for them. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of this first episode, guys. This was just an introduction to the series. We now have uh, access to pretty much the whole map now. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have to go around, start clearing things up i am going to run through kind of what i'm planning on doing uh, in the next episode there we go we got our little message saying what we can do um and then yeah from there on out i'll kind of be doing this as efficiently as i possibly can uh, and bringing you guys along with me so to kind of summarize this episode we've gone through the entire intro uh we've got ourselves a neat pile of uh neurodes already uh, which is going to be really good for crafting uh, some items in the future such as the vectus which we're going to need uh, and we have also gone up to MR1, as you can see. Uh, we are now just inside the uh, the MR1 boundary. And if we take a look, um, our current stats, this might be a good thing to do each episode. We have currently played 1 hour and 6 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, and that's how far through we are. So that's all very good, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I'm going to be trying to do at least one, one of these a week, um, at the very least. Uh, we'll see how well they go. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to be trying to cram as much as possible in, uh, just so that these don't get kind of tedious and drawn out. I want them to be concise and to be informative. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. See you later, guys.